The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. I think half the fun of electronics is being able to make your own custom tech that makes your life or the lives of people around you a little bit easier. So today I'm gonna to be doing just that, making my own custom CNC pendant. Now you may not need one of these, but I do, and hopefully you can apply these concepts to your own projects in the future. Interested? Stick around. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. So I recently picked up a CNC router, specifically a Shapeoko XXL, and I absolutely love it. It enables me to do bigger projects like Claptrap over here. One thing I don't love, however, is setting up. Without getting too specific into the CNC jargon, basically, whenever you create a new piece to be machined, you need to tell the machine exactly where to start. It has no implicit way of knowing where your raw material is on the bed. So I've got a three axis machine, X, Y, and Z, or Z if you're weird, which means that I need to tell the machine and the software exactly where the zero position is for each of those axes. And I do that by controlling the software to move the tool over my workpiece. Now that's all fine and dandy, but if I want to have more accurate control, it would be a lot nicer if I could get really close and still control uh, my machine. Now, I could use a wireless keyboard to do that because the software does have hotkeys, but that's still a little clunky. So instead, I'm gonna make a pendant, which is really just a fancy way of saying a remote control for my machine. And while I'm gonna be making something that's specific to the hotkeys for the software I'm using, this is a concept you could use for any piece of software with hotkeys. Electronics for this build are gonna be very simple. So I'm basically just gonna be creating a USB keyboard. Now obviously it won't look like a USB keyboard, but I need to press buttons and I need to know what state I'm in because I need to know what resolution I'm moving at and I need to know what axis I'm moving. So for the input, I'm going to stick with just good old fashioned panel mount buttons. And I've got these big chunky uh, finger friendly buttons from Grey Hill, which are super cool. And I'm also just going to use some classic five millimeter uh, LEDs as well as current limiting resistors because gotta, ha gotta have them. You gotta limit that current or else they're going to burn up or you're going to destroy your microcontroller. Speaking of microcontrollers, I'm going to be using a Teensy LC. Now there are uh, quite a few varieties of microcontroller you can use that can emulate a USB HID or human interface device, um, but the Teensy LC is my favorite. So that's going, what I'm going to use for my program. And that, oh wait, I almost forgot. Ah, ha 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 ha. I have a rotary encoder. Now this is going to be my main motion input. I'm not gonna have a D-pad, I just want one big wheel for controlling the direction of the axis that I'm gonna use. So this rotary encoder is gonna be my main input um, for the pendant. And this is all sort of conceptual right now, so why don't we hop on over to the 3D world and I can show you my design and it'll make a little bit more sense and I'll stop rambling. All right, so here we are in the land of three dimensions, also known as Fusion 360. So here is my design for the pendant. As you can see, it is very simple. It just consists of three main pieces. We've got a rear plate, a main case, and a face plate. So there doesn't necessarily need to be a rear plate, but I think it's wasteful to 3D print flat pieces of material. Also just takes a lot more time. Um, and it's always nice to have as much access as possible to the inside of your electronic uh, project boxes. 
So that will just be a separate piece of plastic that I machine. And we'll have the main case, which uh, will be 3D printed. And you can see I've just got some holes for screws for mounting everything nice and securely. Up top, you can see I've got the main layout for the user interface. And it is hopefully very straightforward. As you can see, there are three buttons up top, one for each axis, and of course an LED to indicate which axis you're currently controlling. Below that, you've got the resolution buttons. So this is how uh, Carbide Motion, the piece of software that controls the Shapeoko, uh, refers to resolution. So we've got fast, one millimeter per second, or one millimeter per press, I should say, um, and 0.1 millimeters and 0.01 millimeters. Um, so super, super fine resolution. And of course, an LED per each of those buttons. And down below, we've got the rotary encoder, which I've just given a big old knob to make it nice and easy. Now I think I'll just make this faceplate out of aluminum and I'll engrave those labels, which is why they are just uh, sketches or sketch curves as Fusion likes to call them. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's about it. So why don't I go make these parts real and um, then we can start to put it all together. To software. So uh, the sketch is also super minimal. Um, we just need to define all of our inputs and keep track of a very uh, small number of variables. So each of the buttons uh, is pulled up by default. So that means it is active low. And I really like using the bounce library. It just uh, makes reading buttons super easy, so it's uh, software debouncing, and we'll just use that to keep track of what the user has pressed, and most of the rest of this logic is just keeping track of which lights to light up. As you can see, when it gets to actually emulating a keyboard, the software is, is as simple as it gets. Literally just, you know, press this key, release this key. And as far as your computer is concerned, you are using a USB keyboard. Um, so this actually is specific uh, to the Teensy line of microcontrollers. Although other, um, other Arduino variants uh, are capable of doing this, you will just need to use a different library. So this is what I'm using and uh, it should, it should work. There's very, very little to go wrong. But of course things always go wrong. Um, so I'm going to load up the, this sketch onto my Teensy and we'll be able to test it out. And that's it. This is my CNC pendant. Uh, it does exactly what I want it to do. Thankfully, there's very little to go wrong with just a few buttons and some LEDs. 
It's pretty relaxing to have such a simple project every now and again, but it's still highly functional. Hopefully uh, you get a chance to recreate this or it inspires you to make a similar gadget for your own life. And if you do so, please let us know at the Element 14 community. And by the way, you can of course always find the files and code for our projects um, in the link in the description below. Well, I'm gonna go get to CNC routing something and I will see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.